，融聚智慧，方能融创价值。融你我，融无限。江苏银行。I'm Martin Sorrell, and I'm CEO of WPP, and you are watching Who's Time. 提到 WPP 集团呢，在中国了解它的人可能并不多，但是如果提及奥美、智威汤逊、博雅公关、伟达公关等等知名的传播服务品牌呢，熟悉他们的人就一定不少了。而他们呢，都是归属于 WPP 集团旗下。成立于1985年的 WPP 集团，业务涵盖了广告、媒体、投资管理、公共关系、品牌塑造、数字营销等等方面。与财富世界五百强之中的三百六十家企业都有着业务往来，而中国呢是 WPP 仅次于美国和英国之外的第三大市场，拥有一万四千多名员工和十六亿美元的收入。现年七十二岁的 WPP 集团的 CEO 苏明天呢，就是 WPP 的创始人。他早年曾经担任著名广告公司盛世长城的财务总监，从而积累了丰富的广告行业经验。一九八五年呢，他出资购买了 Wear Plastic Products， 一家专门生产金属购物篮的英国上市公司，并以此为壳创办了 WPP。当年呢，就收购了十家营销服务公司。此后呢 ，WPP 又通过大规模的收购、合作和投资，逐渐发展成为今天这样一个庞大的媒体帝国。不久前 ，WPP 在北京发布了 Brand CTM 二零一六最具价值中国品牌一百强榜单。这也是 WPP 连续第七年发布此类的榜单，研究中国品牌的价值变化。出席发布活动的苏明天接受了财经时间的专访，并感叹道：“中国的品牌价值呢，现在正处于不断的上升阶段，有些甚至已经超越了跨国品牌。” WPP hold this event every year, right? And this year, is there any special, interesting insight you want to share with audience who are not here? Okay, well, we've been doing this for seven years, and、wow. we've been looking at the top 100 brands.、Mm-hmm. So I think this year we've seen a, another strengthening of the value of Chinese brands. Those、mm-hmm. top 100 gone up by about five or six percent、mm-hmm. at a time when probably stock markets are a little bit more challenged、mm-hmm. uh, around the world, although emerging markets have started to improve a bit. I think the biggest feature this、mm-hmm. year,、uh, well, a couple of features. Firstly, technology and education have been the the categories, the sectors that have、mm-hmm. grown more rapidly than others.、Mm-hmm. Uh, and Chinese technology is becoming a force, not just in China、mm-hmm. but ar- around the world.、Mm-hmm. Uh, and the second thing, I think, probably the most important thing, is that Chinese brands, for the the first time, seem to be out distancing out distancing、mm-hmm. okay. the foreign multinationals.、Wow. So if you look at the the v- total value is about half a trillion dollars for the top 100 brands as we calculate it,、mm-hmm. and the value of the Chinese brands is now starting to look、mm-hmm. um, more significant,、mm-hmm. bigger. Mm-hmm. Than the value of the multinational brands,、mm-hmm. and that's really showing capitalizing on a trend we've seen the last two or three years. We've、mm-hmm. noticed it with our business here in China, which、mm-hmm. is our third largest market after the U.S. and the U.K.、Mm-hmm. Uh, and what we've seen here is the rise of the Chinese brands, and I think Chinese brands have started to understand the importance of branding、mm-hmm. and building brand equity. And building the value of brands, which enables you to charge、mm-hmm. consumers a higher price because you're delivering better value,、mm-hmm. either tangibly or intangibly. Okay, speaking of Chinese market, yes,、um, I'm very interested. In what kind of the moment actually make you believe China going to be the next huge market for WPP before 24 years ago? Well,、uh, we ke- first came here to China. We said WPP. We started in 1985. 20, okay. And then in 1987, we、mm-hmm. came to Guangzhou. Okay. I took the train from Hong Kong to Guangzhou as one、okay. railway line. Okay. In fact, you had to the the train had to go into a siding,、mm-hmm. and then the down train had to come through, and、okay. then you could continue. So, and I took the same journey、uh, a few months ago, and it's now six railway lines,、mm-hmm. uh, three up and three down.、Mm-hmm. So it's a big change, and it. But the answer to your sto- your question is: We saw in 1987、mm-hmm. the growth of Guangzhou.、Mm-hmm. We stayed in the、uh, Pearl River Hotel. I remember,、um, and we had our conference, our, our board meeting then, and we saw the the dynamism
of the Chinese market. Mm -hmm. And we also followed that famous speech from Deng Xiaoping when mm -hmm. he opened China up. And we thought this was the beginning of a, a surging growth, not just, to be fair, in China, but in Brazil, in Russia, in India, and what we now call the next 11 countries like Vietnam and the Philippines and Indonesia, mm -hmm. uh, the countries that are becoming more and more important. Mm -hmm. So in the past several years, the development of China business ecosystem as same as you're expected or not? Uh, yes, I think mm -hmm. we've seen growth in China mm. tail off. I mean, in the last two years, despite the fact that uh, the government statistics of growth of 6.5% GDP or thereabouts, what is called the new normal. And of course, when people talk about the new normal, we wish that the new normal was going on in the US and the UK because we, we're used to growth of only 2%. Mm -hmm. uh, so we'd love to see 6.5%. But we haven't seen 6.5% uh, here in China in the last couple of years. I mean, years previously, mm -hmm. our business was growing at twice the GDP growth rate. So yeah. if, the growth, if the GDP growth rate was 10%, we would grow at 15 or 20%. Um, and there has been a tempering of growth, and we've seen that in the 12th five-year plan, but more importantly, the 13th five-year mm -hmm. plan, which talks about lower, higher quality growth, but mm -hmm. lower growth, talks about switch from savings to consumption, mm -hmm. talks about a healthcare safety net, because that's why people save. Mm -hmm. And lastly, and probably most importantly from our point of view, talks about the growth of service businesses. Okay. So the extent that service businesses now in China are more than 50% of the economy in Shanghai. Mm -hmm. So what we've seen in China in the last couple of years is a slowing of the growth rate. That has affected the foreign multinationals far more than the local Chinese companies or the Chinese companies are going to become the regional uh, giants uh, or global giants. And they've got stronger. And you see that in our brand survey. You can see that what we're saying is that these, brand, these companies, companies like uh, Alibaba, uh, companies like Tencent, like Sina, uh, like uh, JD.com, like Alibaba, are all developing their brands, not just in China, but internationally too. Yeah. What are the competitive advantages of um, WTP in China market? Well, we have a very strong integrated offer. So we, uh, it could be more integrated in my view, but we have 14,000 people here in more than 80 cities. And if I include the number of people that we have in what we call our distribution sales forces, probably there's another 100, 150,000 people around China helping clients with distribution of their products. So we have a very strong broad offer. It's not just confined to the coastal plain mm -hmm. with Shanghai and Beijing or Guangzhou or Shenzhen, but right through to Chongqing and Chengdu. We go throughout China, throughout all the provinces, mm -hmm. uh, and cover advertising and media, mm -hmm. cover uh, data investment management, mm -hmm. big data business here, uh, public relations and public affairs, branding and identity, healthcare communications are becoming more and more mm -hmm. important, and last but not least, direct and digital. So it's a very strong integrated offer Mm -hmm. um, with strong local management mm -hmm. as well as multinational management. Um, I actually very interesting about WPP's China localization plan because right. in China there's a very special media environment. We have many V media, how to say the personal media. Yes. People create content and directly contact yes. with the clients. Yes. How to deal with this developing well, situation? Uh, it, we're increasingly investing yeah. in content. So, for example, uh, Vice which is a, the leading okay. millennial yeah. content provider. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, people said many, many years ago, I mentioned this on the CDF panel, mm -hmm. that uh, young people, millennials or centennials, mm -hmm. uh, were not interested in news, mm -hmm. uh, which we thought was wrong. They're just as interested in news. The difference is they like it presented to them in different ways. Mm -hmm. So if you look at the way that Vice curates content yeah. for millennials, mm -hmm. it's very different to the, the old, old approach. 在业界有着收购狂人之称的苏明天呢始终相信公司是可以通过收购来进行快速增长的 
也正是苏明天果断的收购和业务整合策略，让 WPP 成功的度过了两千零九年全球广告业严重下滑的危机，在几年的时间内实现了业务大幅回升。What did you do to help WPP experience a U-turn from 2009 to 2011? 2009 was a very tough year. Yeah,、uh, but it was a tough year for GDP and for all our clients. And the hope. We saw a big sharp snapback in 2010.、Mm -hmm. Okay. Was it was not a record year.、Mm -hmm. 2011 was.、Mm -hmm. Then 12 was, and 13, and、mm -hmm. 14, and 15, and 16.、Um, 17 will be a tougher year,、mm -hmm. uh, we think, but we sh we should still still do well again.、Mm -hmm. But I think what happened was we managed our business very effectively in a slow growth world because the world is growing、mm -hmm. at about three percent, three and a half percent nominal. Inflation is very low. Uh, there is very little pricing power as a result,、mm -hmm. and therefore there's a focus on costs. And in that environment, we've managed to grow our business organically,、mm -hmm. make intelligent acquisitions around the strategy,、uh, and then manage to control our investment in people.、Mm -hmm. So we have two hundred thousand people in one hundred and thirteen countries,、mm -hmm. but we've managed to balance the growth in revenues against the growth in staff costs and the growth in headcount、mm -hmm. in an extremely effective way. Okay. So I think that's been the principle. We've had balanced growth, with strong margin growth,、uh, since 2010. We know you are very famous at acquisition part of the business. Yeah. Does this your idea or strategy of the acquisition changed in the past thirty、no, years? No, I think it's been very focused on four areas. One to,、mm -hmm. to make sure we get integration of horizontality, as we call、okay. it. Secondly, to be focused on the fast growth market, so、okay. the BRICS and Next Eleven, because the next billion consumers. Are not going to come from the U.S. and Western Europe. We're going to come from Asia, from、mm -hmm. Latin America, from Africa, the Middle East, and Central East and Europe. So the acquisitions tend to be like we've announced、mm -hmm. an acquisition here in China today,、mm -hmm. um, and in, in digital transformation, and that's a good example.、So、the third criterion is digital.、Mm -hmm. So that acquisition uh, uh, it, it, it meets that criterion as well.、Okay. And digital is now forty percent of our business. We wanted to be forty-five, fifty percent, and then finally data. Mm -hmm. uh, which is twenty five percent of our business, which is about right level.、Mm -hmm. uh, together with digital, it's well over half our business. When you look back, all this acquisition, anything make you feel regret? We made mistakes,、mm -hmm. but no, I don't think any major regrets. I mean, we, if anything, the regret that I have is that we didn't do more.、Mm -hmm. That if I look at those criteria of fast growth markets,、mm -hmm. of digital and data. I think the interesting thing is that we probably decided not to do things because of valuation was too high, or we were nervous about something、mm. about it. And with the benefit of twenty twenty hindsight,、mm. I would say、uh, we, if I've got a regret, is that we didn't move faster. Okay. Many Chinese big company right now would like to go to overseas by very huge companies, but there is still a debate: does the company can really buy growth through acquisition? I think one of the things that Chinese companies have to be a little bit careful about、mm -hmm. is that a number of companies,、uh, quite rightly, having exhausted the opportunities in China, which is the second largest market、mm -hmm. in the world, ten trillion dollars of G GDP against a worldwide、mm -hmm. figure of about seventy seventy two. America is about nineteen trillion. So those are the top two economies. Japan, number three, at around、mm -hmm. five six trillion. So China is incredibly important. But what you have to do is to go through all the opportunities, satiate all the opportunities in China, and then you start to look abroad. Okay. And I think at the markets that are closer, don't be too ambitious or go into too many of the markets where the competition is intense. But I think you then have to be very focused. You know,、mm -hmm. there are two types of expansion broadly by Chinese companies. One、mm -hmm. is diverse、mm -hmm. conglomerate expansion, like a Fosun or a Wanda.、Mm -hmm. The others would be a more focused one, like a Huawei or Lenovo or、mm -hmm. Hire, which focuses on the focuses on the product categories that、mm -hmm. they know best. And I think that's much stronger. I think、yeah. there is a danger,、uh, and I think Chinese companies have done it to diversify their asset、mm -hmm. base and their revenue base.、Uh, and we've seen it in our own industry. One or、mm -hmm. two, without mentioning names. Have been very aggressive on acquisitions and have made some terrible mistakes. Yeah, because they've gone at it too quickly and、mm -hmm. tried to do it too too diverse. 近年来啊，随着传播媒介技术的不断更新，数字媒体广告发展的势头迅猛。
。根据研究报告显示，二零一六年数字媒体广告占全球广告支出超过了百分之三十，预计将在二零一七年超过电视，成为全球最大的广告类型。而在中国呢，二零一七年整体广告市场将增长百分之八，其中数字广告支出的增长仍然是最大的媒介趋势。而传统电视尽管仍是广告的主要投放渠道，但其地位却逐渐的被互联网以及移动端所取代。When we talk about television, we're not just talking about linear TV, that's network television,、mm-hmm. like、uh, CCTV or、mm-hmm. whatever it happens to be. We're talking about what happens online as well as offline. And actually, the number of viewing hours、mm-hmm. uh, in China、mm-hmm. and the UK and the US is growing because、mm-hmm. the number of hours that we spend watching a screen、mm-hmm. is growing. Whether、okay. it be a smartphone screen,、yeah. mobile phone screen, iPad, or whatever it happens to be,、mm-hmm. um, when you talk about television or that in the context of that question,、mm-hmm. you're talking about 30 second television ads or 60 second TV ads、mm-hmm. in classical linear network TV.、Yeah. But actually,、mm-hmm. the power of screens is getting greater. You know, whether you're at an airport and watching a screen,、mm-hmm. in a sports stadium watching a screen,、mm-hmm. whatever it happens to be, those flat screens、mm-hmm. of various sizes are becoming more and more important.、Mm-hmm. So I would modify, you know, Adidas maybe、mm-hmm. reducing their classical TV、mm-hmm. advertising, but when you think about what they're producing,、mm-hmm. they're probably producing their own content.、Mm-hmm. For online television,、uh, they're certainly commissioning content for、mm-hmm. online TV, and consumers, their consumers, millennials, centennials,、mm-hmm. are consuming more and more stuff on、mm-hmm. screen. So screens are becoming more important. So I think we have to be careful about definitions. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the mobile screens. I mean, we haven't, as an industry in China and elsewhere,、mm-hmm. developed the capability of creative yet. Mm-hmm. Uh, creative ideas on small screens,、okay. small mobile screens, but it will come.、Mm-hmm. The screens will get more powerful, or the devices will get more powerful. The bandwidth will become, you know, five G.、Mm-hmm. We've seen in India,、uh, Mukesh Ambani、mm-hmm. investing sixteen billion dollars in a five G five G network,、okay. offer it to consumers for free、mm-hmm. to build market share, and we've seen tremendous penetration. So there are some things going on. Revolutionary things going on in the industry, which I think will make screens more and more important. The interesting thing、mm-hmm. is that text will probably become less important, important, and voice-activated screens and devices, whether it be what we see on Amazon with Alexa or whatever it happens to be, will become more important. 在数字媒体广告领域呢 ，Facebook 和 Google 两大巨头牢牢地把握住了市场，占据了2016年美国数字媒体广告市场百分之五十八的份额。再加上主流广告公司之间越来越激烈的竞争 ，WPP 的业务发展也在经历着严峻的挑战。而在苏明天看来呢，最让他业务能卖的对手并非是 Facebook 或者是 Google， 而是亚马逊。他认为，尽管这家电商公司在数字广告业务上仍然在一个探索阶段。但是呢，他所拥有的大量用户数据信息将推动他成为数字媒体广告领域的一个巨大的推动力。We know there are many strong、uh, new media plan-、yes. platform、uh, and companies such、yes. as Verizon Communication, Google, and Facebook. Now, why Amazon is particularly well, Amazon, alarming? Well, Amazon is penetrating、mm-hmm. so many areas. I mean, it obviously started、mm-hmm. in books.、Uh, the irony is that Amazon is probably one of the only retail operations.、Mm-hmm. That is building physical stores.、Okay. You know, Sears might be closing, Macy's might be closing in America.、Mm-hmm. I remember waking up one morning and seeing it on television. But Amazon was actually building smaller stores for physical distribution. But Amazon is not just about books; it's about、mm-hmm. online commerce, and、mm-hmm. and actually, even to the extent of what we call private label. That that I remember when I met with the CEO, of one of our clients, a big package goods company, that very day. Amazon announced that it was going into the packaged goods, personal goods、mm-hmm. business. So what Amazon has is a platform, as you say. It collects the data, so、mm-hmm. it, it collects the data, you know, your, what your shopping shopping habits are,、mm-hmm. and what your media habits are as well. Okay. And it targets you with advertising.、Mm-hmm. It provides you the opportunity to search.、Mm-hmm. So Amazon is going to become increasingly competitive to Google、mm-hmm. on on the search product. Mm-hmm. Okay. So it covers a broad range of started in books,、okay. 
but now right through to e-commerce, data, mm -hmm. search, voice technology, even from a personal capacity into mm -hmm. media. So he's covering an awful lot of ground. I think, you know, he is, uh, when I ask clients, what do you worry about? The answer very often to that question is Amazon. Okay. You also call those company a uh, frenemy, right? Well, I, I, I didn't call Amazon a frenemy it's so Google much, and but Facebook. Google and Facebook, yes. Okay. Now, they've turned out to be a friendlier frenemy than we, we thought. Mm -hmm. um, but, and, you know, if I look at our media portfolio, which is $75 billion, we invest on behalf of clients or with clients $75 billion in media, of which I think China is about $5 billion. Mm -hmm. um, out of that 75 billion last year, 5 billion went to Google. So it wow. was our biggest media investment. Okay. The second biggest media investment was the Murdoch uh, Group, okay. Star, Sky, mm -hmm. Fox, News Corp, mm -hmm. at about two and a quarter billion. And then third was Facebook at 1.7 billion. Okay. So the point of the story is that two, the two frenemies, Google and Facebook, um, are both, have both become major investments mm -hmm. for us on, with, together with our clients mm -hmm. in terms of the media they invest in. Mm -hmm. So, and a lot of our people have been worried over the years and analysts and journalists have been mm -hmm. saying, aren't Facebook and Google going to go direct? Mm -hmm. Well, the answer is they haven't. And mm -hmm. we've managed to build up our relationship. How about in China market? Well, I mean, we work closely with Tencent, and oh, okay. with, uh, BAT, with, you oh, know, okay. with Baidu, uh, with Alibaba mm -hmm. uh, and with Tencent. But we work with all the media. Mm -hmm. Uh, across the board, both traditional, CCTV, mm -hmm. Shanghai Media, okay. Kaixin, all, mm -hmm. all of them, okay. uh, in developing uh, their, their medium. I heard a WPP just invited a new uh, virtual reality company. Uh, sorry, a new one? Virtual reality. We are yeah, well, we've, we've invested uh, here in China okay. with, in, with, in it, with an IMAX okay. organized virtual reality company. Yeah. And we believe that the technology is going to be very interesting. I mean, mm -hmm. it's in its infancy. The issue is not going to be the hardware. Mm -hmm. That will be continued to be developed. The issue will be what content, what software you put on it. So developing the content is mm -hmm. going to be critically important. And that's what the investment in IMAX's virtual reality operation is. Okay. So virtual reality has been very popular in China, but yes. seems with a lot of challenges. For well, uh, uh, some of our people believe mm -hmm. it's going to take a long time. Yeah. Rather how, like how 3D glasses. Yeah. You know, we still wear... 3D glasses when you go and see a 3D okay. film. But mm -hmm. artificial intelligence, virtual reality, um, voice uh, directed uh, or voice triggered mm -hmm. technology is, in my view, is going to overtake text. You okay. know, you see, you, you already see people in China talking into their phones in, incessantly. And that, you know, we will order <clears throat> what we want just through voice recognition. Uh, we will, you know, do a lot, conduct a lot of our lives in a mobile way, mm -hmm. but again using voice rec recognition technology. 当前的全球不安定的政治因素给传媒业带来了一定的冲击，而美国总统特朗普上台之后，曾经多次指责美国的主流媒体制造假新闻，刻意的抹黑他。作为传媒业巨头的掌舵者，苏明天又是如何看待这一位对媒体不甚友好的总统呢？对于特朗普目前所颁布的一系列政策，他又有着怎样的评价 ？How about the future? Are you worried about the President Trump or the Brexit? No, I, th I think Trump is good for America. Okay. America first is not bad for American GDP. Mm -hmm. Tax reductions, repatriation of tax, infrastructure spending, reduction of regulation, mm -hmm. all of these things. And, and then his relationship with the business community mm -hmm. is far stronger than it was under President Obama. I mean, basically, mm -hmm. I don't think President Obama liked uh, business particularly. Um, I think he felt that business people when they saw him were pursuing their own agendas, which may have been true. Mm. But I think uh, President Trump accepts that. And, and there's been a sea change, a massive mm -hmm. change in the attitude of the administration to mm -hmm. business. So I sit on the business council and the business round table. And the, the degree of optimism is very high mm -hmm. amongst business leaders because they see uh, a, a Trump administration reducing taxes, reducing regulation, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, trying to make trade more balanced uh, in, their, in the minds of uh, the president and uh, some of his advisors, if not all, mm -hmm. and the electorate that elected, elected him. Mm 
Mm-hmm. Um, they're saying that what they want is uh, not just free trade, but fair trade, because mm-hmm. they think America has been disadvantaged, rightly or wrongly. I mean, if you talk to Chinese um, government officials, they, they're not quite so convinced by the case. Okay. Um, but I think what basically the Trump, Trumponomics mm-hmm. is good for the US economy. And in the short to medium term, mm-hmm. I think we'll see an increase in the GDP growth rate in America. The question is what's good for America may not be good yeah. for the rest of the world. So what we gain on the swings in the US, we lose on the roundabouts outside the US. Okay. But overall, I would be bullish on the US in the short term. The big question mark is what happens internationally.